All right, we're here with Pedro Vela from the Rev Institute, uh, Naples, Florida. Uh, Pedro, can you talk about the institute to itself? Yeah, good morning. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Pedro. I'm from the Rev Institute, which houses the Mount Quality Collection. Uh, we're located in Naples, Florida. So the Rev Institute is a nonprofit organization that was built to house the Mount Quality Collection automobiles, and also we have archives. Uh, memorabilia, literature, of, you know, from the beginning of the automobile up until President's time. So it's something that's open to the public. The more welcome to come visit. You can actually do a reservation in the library as well if you want to do research on any kind of automobile. Um, and we're more than welcome you know, to help. How many cars library. do you have in the museum? So the collection, give or take, consists of about 140 cars, depending on what's on loan, what's out, you know, being displayed at different parts of the world. Um, and the cars, what's interesting about the museum is that all the cars get driven at least once a year. That's kind of our motto. Um, and if not, you know, we are taken to events, uh, different parts all over the world, um, and showcase them, you know, the same with the people, which is what it's all about, our motive and passion. Uh, like, so that's what brought us here this time for the wonderful reunion of Eagles. And uh, this time we brought two from our collection. Okay. Um, the first one, which is the, the blue car over there, that's Sassy 74004. It's uh, so it's a pretty historical car uh, that's part of the collection, and then the, our main feature is the car we're standing next to. This is a 1967 uh, Gurney Eagle MK1. This car is pretty special. So, Gurney built an all our all American racers built four of these, three out of aluminum, and then this one, which is uh, made out of titanium and magnesium exotic alloys. Uh, which very, is light very light, very yeah, light. The car weighs uh, right over 1,200 pounds. It's a pretty light car. Now, this particular car is pretty special, apart from being, you know, made out of exotic materials. Um, it's been the only time for a constructor, being Danny Gurney, uh, got in the car racing himself and won a Formula One race. So it's been, you know, it's been the only time in history that that's ever happened. It probably will ever happen ever again. Happen again. And it also for you know for the United States, it's a pretty symbolic uh, automobile because it's been the only time. Post war, you know, prior to World War, there was a Duesenberg, but post war, it's been the only American Formula One car that went a Formula One race, and the only one with an American driver, which also, you know, would probably be very unlike that, Not, unless cost or something like that gets an American yeah. driver and, uh, and uh, you know, are able to accomplish something like that. So this is Chassis 1004. Uh, something interesting that you can tell differentiate the magnesium monocoque from the aluminum is the rivet spacing. The aluminum rivet spacing, they're probably about almost an inch apart. These are you know, just a few millimeters uh, apart. And then this is a car that also gets driven pretty often. We just ran it at the Velocity Invitation of Laguna Seca in November of last year. But it's been a good one, you know, I think close to a dozen times. It's been driven by Brian Redman, Derek Bell, Jackie Stewart, Martin Brundle, uh, Mr. David Cox is driven the car. And the car has a uh, V12, which sounds, you know, pretty amazing. They, he first started out with uh, Climax engines, and so they were easy to beat small Wesley engines were built, and he, he put in a 3 liter, revs up to about 300,000 RPM, so they sound magnificent. They have mechanical fuel uh, injection system. Uh, yesterday was my first day. I got to experience the track a little bit. The weather was nice, so I got to drive around and visit. It's an amazing, beautiful track. It has the old school feel where you can tell the track right. is going somewhere, you know, similar spa, Into the woods. which is where this car won. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so talking about the, the history of this car, and it was actually at spa when uh, Dan Gurney won in 1967, round three. Uh, so that's been the, the only time in an American drive of an American car. I know yesterday you own up Dan Jr. was here and he got in the car, got to sit in it a little bit. He was the first time he had ever seen in his father's car. Um, and I believe, I believe Alex and Jeff will be here today, so it'll be interesting okay, to hear their thoughts and kind of their emotions standing next to their car that their father raised. Okay, in Naples, Florida, it's open to the public three days a week. You just have to go on uh, online, make a reservation at residency.org. And um, yeah, or like I said, if you're doing any type of automotive restoration or research, uh, you know, we're, we're open to the public for that. We have endless amounts of workshop manuals, technical specifications, you know, any type of information like that.
Phil Gumpert from Indianapolis. He brought his 1969 Olsenite Eagle uh, by Dan Gurney. Uh, can you tell us about the car? Well, it's a, uh, as I said, 1969. It was one of four cars that uh, Dan Gurney brought to the track in 69. It was the Santa Ana Eagles. Uh, Tony Southgate was a designer who later uh, designed some uh, Formula One cars, early designer of these cars. And this car uh, ran with a... Uh, Turbo off in in '69. Gurney practiced in the car, but the car didn't didn't race. He didn't have a, a, a fourth driver for the car, and so this is serial number 702. Uh, so they were seven one, two, three, and four. And uh, 0, uh, 01, Gurney finished second at Indy in '69. 03, I think, was driven by uh, Joe Leonard, and 04, I think, was Danny Hume. So they were all very exceptional drivers for all, all of them. As I say, I'm not sure where the other cars finished. I've owned this car for, I think, about 10 years. We've gone through the car, and it's a great running car. It's, uh, right now, we're running with a uh, Ford uh, uh, short block or stock, stock so it's block. It's mainly all original? It's all, mainly all original. And after Indy, uh, I had a conversation with Bill Simpson before he passed away a few years back, and he indicated he thought he had driven this car and owned it, but I can't, I can't attest to that. But then it, it ran as a four, Formula 5000 uh, for several years, and uh, without faith in California, as a matter of fact. And then I'm not sure where the car went. Somebody indicated it went to Georgia. From Georgia, uh, there was a guy out of uh, Chicago that bought the car. And then there was a uh, gentleman in uh, Palm Springs, a gentleman by the name of uh, Bob Pond, who had a hell of a collection of cars. And this is one of the cars that was in his collection. And actually, I tried to buy this car twice. First time I didn't get it done, and the, the second time I bought it, to, it was in an auction in Monterey uh, at, uh, at the bargain uh, auction in Monterey. And I bought the car. So approximately 10 years ago. And we've run it uh, quite a few times. Ran it at Indy on the Oval, run in St. Louis uh, several times on the Oval. It's a great driving car, great running car. It's just uh, very correct. And, all the decals and everything are like like they were, and so it's a pretty original car. So a gathering here at Roar America of all these uh, American Eagles, what does that mean to you? Uh, fantastic. It's, it's just outstanding that we can get this many cars uh, in one place. And, and uh, this car actually, uh, when Dan Gurney had a, re a, a reunion for Dan about, uh, let's say it was seven or eight years ago at the Speedway, and we had all four of these cars. At, on, on the, at the track and uh, had a photo shoot with Dan and his family and, and uh, I got to visit with him. He was a very gracious gentleman and just, just super nice. And so this is another reunion of these cars and, and just he was an innovator and certainly a hell of a driver and just a really, really a nice gentleman. So uh, it's, it's a great, great to have these cars and these, all these fans come out today and it's, too bad that we got the, uh, the shower this morning, but it'll clear off, and hopefully tomorrow we can get get to run the car. I'm president of Vintage Indy, and we do all the companion Vintage Indy car events with IndyCar and other sanctioning bodies. And uh, we've got a great collection of Dan Gurney AR Eagles here today, approximately 30 cars uh, covering the gamut of all of the AR's, you know, build there, more or less. We brought four cars up from Indianapolis. Uh, this is the 72 Olsenite Eagle driven by Bobby Unser. Uh, 72 e Eagle was the pole winning car in Indianapolis in 1972. And one of the unique things about the car is that in 1972, the pole speed in Indianapolis eclipsed the previous year's pole speed, which was set by Bobby Unser. 
by 18 miles an hour, which is the largest jump ever, and it's never been equal. Uh, it was also the first year for rear, rear wings, which was allowed by the sanctioning body, United States Auto Club, and uh, turbocharged Offenhauser engine putting out about 1,300 horsepower into a roughly 1,500-pound wet weight car. And behind it is a 1973 Eagle, also an Olsenite Eagle, uh, number 48. It was driven by Jerry Grant, who was the house driver. Uh, for AAR, just like Bobby Unser. And in the far background is uh, another 1972 Eagle that was driven by Mike Mosley. And it was a leader card car owned by the Wilkie family out of Milwaukee. Uh, they won the Indy 500 twice with Roger Ward and once with Bobby Unser. And uh, Bob and Ralph Wilkie, father and son, fielded Indy cars for years in Indianapolis and had quite a history there. Okay, bringing these type of cars here for uh, this reunion at Road America, what, what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me. I knew Dan Gurney and his son Danny and, and Justin are friends of mine, and uh, I was a former IndyCar mechanic 50 years ago with two of the larger teams, that being Vels Parnelli Jones and STP Patrick Racing. And uh, at Patrick, I worked on a lot of Eagles, including that second car, because after the Indy 500 and Jerry Grant driving that for Dan, Dan sold that car to Pat Patrick to replace Sweet Savage's car. And I was on Gordon Johncock's car that year, and Gordy ran that car in every race in 73 after Pocono. And we won Phoenix and Trenton with that car. We were on a couple of poles with that car. Started the front row of the California 500 at Ontario Motor Speedway with Pete Revson and Jerry Grant and another Olsen Night Eagle. So this means a lot to me. Uh, of all the cars I worked on in my lifetime, Eagles were my favorite car. Uh, Dan Gurney was a personal hero of mine going back to childhood and definitely my teen years. So it's an extreme privilege to be around these cars, to have spent time with them, to have gone to Victory Circle with them 50 years ago, and then to be here at Road America. Uh, I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking to you because there's 30 incredible cars here that span the gamut of AAR. So. And it's great for the public to see these and cars. It's fabulous for the public to see these cars and pay homage to Dan Gurney, who was, in my opinion, an American motorsports icon, an American icon. And, uh, you know, behind us over here, we've got the spa-winning 67 Belgian Grand Prix car and the 75 Indy winner. We've got a lot of race-winning Eagles in here. We've got the Pepsi Challenger down there, which won the pole at Indianapolis for AAR and Dan Gurney, and it was driven by Mike Mosley and so forth and so on. So the history that's concentrated under this tent today is absolutely phenomenal. And uh, it's just wonderful that we can share this with the public. And that's what Vinny Dindy is all about, is getting these cars out there, preserving the history and uh, preserving the knowledge of the history for future generations.
My name is Jacques Dreesang. We are here at the 2022 WeatherTech International Challenge, where the featured mark is Dan Gurney's All-American Racer Eagle. Um, I'll be introducing three cars that are part of our collection. Um, I'm with Pebble Preservation and Restoration, uh, located in Dubois, Wisconsin. Um, we're kind of just a family collection, and the, the collection that we collect is that of Dan Gurney Eagle race cars. The first car we're shown is a really rare eagle. This is a Formula Ford, and you think, oh, a Formula Ford, that's, you know, everyone, everyone's seen them. Not many have seen this. This is one of 13. This is a 1977 Dan Gurney Eagle DGF, DGF standing for Dan Gurney Ford. This is chassis number five. It was originally sold to uh, Bob Tankersley in Colorado in early 1978. The car was all yellow, and uh, Bob raced it in California first and then back in his native Colorado. It later went to another uh, Coloradian by the name of Dirk Piz, uh, who was later unfortunately killed in a superbike accident at Daytona in 2001, um, and then went to um, a fellow by the name of Ted Whitkoff from uh, Minnesota, who raced the car in the mid-80s. Here in Road America, indeed, it was black and gold in color number 48. Um, it then went back to California. It was raced by Bob Watt, Chuck Raggio, and Bill Kincaid. And we found it for sale in uh, 2009. Uh, we restored it for about a year and a half and then started racing it in SECA competition on slicks. Very sticky slick tires, which was a no-no, as I found out, because I wanted to crash the car at the 2011 June Sprint when the front suspension failed. Um, since 2015, we've raced the car in vintage, and I've been the, the lucky recipient with this car. We won the, the 2017 and the 2021 Monoposta Cup Championship for the Club Ford category. Club Ford meaning Formula Ford, ranging from 1973 to 1981. Um, the greatest feat we've had with the car was at the 2019 Monterey reunion. Uh, we were one of 58 cars in the field, and uh, we were... We were one of five drivers not from California in the group. Uh, qualified 11th of the 57 and uh, fought my way back from a pre-final incident from 49th to 20th. And we were the recipients of the Rolex Award of Excellence of, at that at that uh, race. Um, it's, it's a club race, sir. It never ran anything. <laughs> Eagle, purchased by Roger Penske in Penske Racing in April of 1973 for driver Mark Donahue. Uh, Mark and, and Team Penske went to Indy in April of 1973 for a tire test for Goodyear Tires and found they were seven miles an hour off the pace of the factory Eagle. Now, Dan wasn't going to sell them a 73 Eagle, so he sold them a 72. He sold all, all, the, all the customer 72s up until after Indy. Dan, or, uh, excuse me, Mark qualified outside of the front row at 197.413 miles an hour and finished, he failed to finish, he blew a piston on lap 92 of the 133 lap race. Uh, this was Mark Donahue's final Indy car. Later, it was raced by uh, Gary Bettenhausen, it was raced by um, Bill Simpson, and Simpson was the man who put a young fellow by the name of Rick Mears in this car in the September 1976 Cal 500. This, this was basically Rick Mears' rookie car. It only ever made one Indy 500, but it did so with Mark Donahue, was, who was then the reigning champion, and, and this was Mark's last and Rick's first. So that's the main significance of this. It's restored back to the way it qualified at Indy in 73. Um, on race day, the nose, uh, the yellow on the nose went down to Sunoco, and the, the blue actually encompassed the numbers. So this, we, we, we thought it looked cooler the way it qualified, so that's how you see it today. Finally, another 72 Eagle. This is chassis 7228. Uh, this car was delivered in September of 1973 after the Commander Racing Team wrecked their 7224 Eagle, which is also present here today, at the Cal 500, uh, basically uh, flatwalling the side of the chassis after a tire blow. So this car went to the team with driver Lloyd Ruby, and uh, Rube ran it throughout the 73 season and then throughout the 74 season. He was running third at Indy uh, with 20 to go, and they ran it out of fuel. Um, in 74, they also raced uh, at the Formula 5000 round at Ontario Motor Speedway in the road course, and he blew a turbo. In 75, this car and its sister car went to the uh, um, Baddest Enterprises group, and uh, Johnny Parsons Jr. raced it as the number 93 car that year. Steve Kristoloff ran it in 1976 and 77. 
1978, the car was narrowed in a very wedge-like shape like its sister is today. And it was uh, it, it tried to make Indy with Al Acosta and Gary Irvin. Uh, in 79, John Mailer tried to make it at Indy, but it, uh, failed to do so. But he got a sister car in the field. In 1980, for the uh, Copa Mexico 150 Mexico City, Juan Carlos Bolonos drove the car. And at the final race at Ontario, Chip Mead drove this car until the first fuel stop when his brother put in the fuel nozzle and fuel spilled everywhere. There was pit fire. And uh, that was the car's last race. It was actually here at Road America 1982 for the first uh, Pro Vimeville 200. Uh, Rick DeLordo, who from Illinois, had the car with a stock block Chevy and failed to make the grid. So the car is restored to the way it was first run in September 1973 at the Michigan race. So these are the three uh, running eagles that KMPR will have here this weekend. Uh, myself and, and some some of uh, <laughs> So my good friends who are shocked that they're going to be driving these are going to be driving these um, um, during the dem demonstration session. And the 46 car, the Eaglet, will be in Group Four, where we will try to uh, try to win the Formula Ford race. So, thank you.